We have great news. Apple TV Plus has given the green light for Bad Sisters Season 2, and as you can already guess, the show's fans are going wild. Now, we know you must have a lot of questions. Well, don't worry, because we've got all the answers. So stick around to find out everything. First up, Apple TV Plus renews Bad Sisters for Season 2. Bad Sisters, the global hit, darkly comedic murder mystery series from Emmy Award-nominated and BAFTA Award-winning executive producer and actor Sharon Horgan, has been renewed for for a second season on Apple TV+. Sharon said that three years ago, if you told her she'd be filming a series about five vicious sisters hunting a man around Ireland attempting to kill them, she'd have answered, yeah, that sounds about right. The show's response has succeeded their expectations. It allowed them to shed light on stories that don't normally receive such a broad audience, and now she's looking forward to a second dip in the Irish Sea. Moving on, Bad Sisters was one of the year's best shows. Since its global premiere, Bad Sisters has been acclaimed as one of the year's best shows as each new episode of Bad Sisters debuted week after week on Apple TV+, the series received consistent praise from critics and fans globally and currently holds a 100% score on Rotten Tomatoes. The Critics' Choice Association Women's Committee has awarded Bad Sisters the newly launched Seal of Female Empowerment in Entertainment for the recently aired Season 1 finale episode, which was the most fulfilling TV conclusion of the year. Following up, here are some details about the show. The close-knit Garvey sisters in Bad Sisters have always looked out for one another. When their brother-in-law dies, his life insurers investigate to prove malicious intent and set their sights on the sisters, all of whom had good cause to murder him. Sharon Horgan, Anne Marie Duff, Eva Berthissel, Sarah Green, and Eve Hewson in the ensemble cast of Bad Sisters played the Garvey sisters. The casts completed by Clay's Bang, Brian Gleason, Daryl McCormick, Asad Bouab, and Sace Quinn. Coming up, Bad Sisters is a family feud drama and it's fiery than the HOTD. The TV streaming wars have just completed a big fight in which Harfoots and Hulks went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Despite this, one contender clawed its way back to reclaim a legacy that had been since lost, turning millions of heads in the process. House of the Dragon, the prequel to Game of Thrones, overcame a damaged name to gather similar numbers to the show that preceded it. With the season finale alone bringing in 9.3 million viewers, this is an incredible feat and thanks to Queen Rhaenyra and company for their efforts. But House of the Dragon isn't the only show this year to handle death in house events so skillfully. Big Little Lies from the Emerald Isle doesn't require knights, queens, or overly pointy chairs to fight for, and it manages to dispose of unwanted branches of the family tree in an even flashier form. All it takes are five loyal sisters and a terrible j competing to be one of the year's best small screen villains. This series is called Bad Sisters, and it could be the best show of 2022 that didn't make it to your watch list. Here's why you should check it out. Not to mention, family matters more in Bad Sisters than in the House of the Dragon. As mentioned before, Bad Sisters follows five sisters, three of whom who band together with the eldest one to murder their brother-in-law and Grace's husband, played by Anne-Marie Duff. Aside from plotting such a horrific crime, each sister has her drama to navigate. None of them are perfect, but their chemistry is unmatched and blows that out of any house in Game of Thrones. House actors always perform much better when the cast has chemistry. Even the limited time the Starks spent together made us wonder if we ever see them together again when things went wrong in season one. That has never been the case in House of the Dragon, regardless of how many similar wigs are used. Some may share a spark, whether familial, romantic, or both, but it is unlike anything that has come before. That is not true for Bad Sisters. This cast of women feels like they've known one another forever, and it raises the bar for everyone else. The Garveys are at their best when they don't say anything. It's the shared look around the table only siblings can read. Of course, we agree House of the Dragon has a timeline to navigate, but the Garveys do as well. Next, Bad Sisters' time management beats House of the Dragon's handling of family history. The alleged jerk is no longer alive. That is not a spoiler. JP was dead from the start, leaving just his wife to mourn. It's here that we're transported back to when JP was alive and kicking the spirit out of anyone he came across, including his loving wife. In the manner of clan on which the show's based, it's a valuable source of storytelling that comes into play as two insurance agents investigate the reason for death, suspecting foul play. The more they uncover, the more we're sent back to witness exactly how much of a bag JP was. This storytelling 
application could have been more helpful if they had also utilized it in House of the Dragon. While the younger Rhaenyra and Alicent kept us interested, the first season felt like it was their time to stand out, rather than their adult counterparts. After the first few episodes, the time change took some getting used to, with Olivia Cook's Alicent feeling more natural than Emma D'Arcy's Rhaenyra. Also, flying around the time frame might have been beneficial, connecting the dots about how Aemon lost his eye or why Rhaenyra was so focused on her duty to become queen could have had a more significant impact and made picking sides even more difficult. Let's talk about Bad Sisters villain beating any Game of Thrones baddie to date. To say Game of Thrones has featured evil villains is an understatement. House Lannister, Bolton, and Targaryen have all created some rotten eggs, but none can compete with Bad Sisters villain John Paul. Clay's Bang, who's played Dracula in the past, has created a creature even more monstrous than the Prince of Darkness. Every episode contains a JP moment that will make you want to get off the couch. What makes it worse is that, unlike any other villain in Westeros, John Paul's acts and worldview make him even more despicable because once all is said and done, people like him exist. John Paul is a toxic, gaslighting man you hope your friend never introduces you to as their new partner. He's not a rule-breaking prince or a treacherous, allying lord plotting to take over. Rather, he's a snake in an office shirt sharper than any sword, who doesn't always confront the consequences of his heinous crimes. Given that the universe of Game of Thrones is full of characters whose moral compasses are continually shifting, John Paul is a classic antagonist who's always looking south, and you're hoping the Garveys get to him as soon as possible. Now, Bad Sisters doesn't outstay its welcome the way House of the Dragon still might. Some of the best televised stories have been one and done gigs that have made them intriguing to return to, and Bad Sisters fits that criteria wonderfully from start to finish. The narrative of these girls plotting against this evil in hiking boots concluded in the most satisfying way possible, with plot twists that were just as intriguing, if not more so, than any in Westeros. And while Bad Sisters and House of the Dragon are working in entirely different genres, the basis of each story is the same, both focus on family legacies and keeping an eye out for your own to ensure it's protected no matter what. The lone wolf dies, but the pack lives, and so on. While this concept applies to both shows, House of the Dragon struggles to follow the same formula as its predecessor, and while the comeback has been triumphant so far, many fans are still concerned that House of the Dragon will fail like Game of Thrones did. Finally, what to expect from Bad Sisters Season 2? Organ had said that the project would be a limited series, but she said she would be open to a continuation given the right idea came along. Season 2 of Bad Sisters could focus on Matt and Becca's romance, which has proven popular with viewers. That's not surprising given McCormick's performance as a strong rom-com lead opposite Emma Thompson in Good Luck Leo Grand. Season 2 of The Bad Sisters might see the titular siblings involved in yet another murder investigation. So far, Apple TV has established itself as a quality curator with titles ranging from sports drama swagger to the social satire severance. And considering the company's steadily expanding reputation and Horgan's track record, fans are likely in for a treat. That's a wrap for this video, my friends. What are your thoughts on Bad Sisters? Are you excited about Season 2? Please let us know in the comments below, and please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.